Hi, good morning. Hi, Exa. Good morning. Morning. Morning, Carla. How are you? Um, I'm fine. Thanks. Yeah. Are you cold? <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> yes. Well, I am sleeping every day, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. Is it raining by your house? Uh, yes. Yeah. It's raining. It is. Too. Yeah. Yes. All right. Very good. Exa, what about in your house? Is it raining? Yes. Yeah. Very <laughs> hard or not very hard? No, very hard. Uh, we Carla live near. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> cool. Oh, very nice. Interesting. Do you travel? Like, do you commute together or not? Uh, no. Uh, near <laughs> about one kilometer. Oh, well, near enough. All right. Very good. And now, what are you guys? Here? Yeah, a little bit. And do you guys have to like go to work, or you're you're working from home? Uh home. Uh home. Uh -huh. Home office. How do you like it? Well, I feel good because I can eat all that I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. All right. Okay. Do you think you have more responsibilities like from home office than actually from your office? Or is it the same? For me, it's the same. Uh, I think that for me, it's more because um, there are a lot of things that uh, we have to we have to do without the 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 boss support so right, yeah. uh, for something it's it's more difficult right yeah, but, but interesting <laughs> it's interesting yeah it's a new yes. it's a new job right it's a new way to work very good yes all right nice interesting very good. Hi, Maria Araceli. Hi, Giovanni. Hi, Blanca. Hi, good Hi. morning. How are you today? <laughs> yeah. Sleepy. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit difficult today because it's raining and it's a little chilly, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, all right. Well, hopefully it's going to, well, I don't think it's going to stop raining all day today. Let's see what happens tomorrow, okay? All right, guys, very good. Thank you for joining the class this early. And I know it's very difficult sometimes to wake up to an English class, but that's what it is. All right. So um, yesterday I told you that we were going to check the platform for, for the pronunciation. I don't know if you guys were able to see the pronunciation on the platform with the O sound. Remember that in English, it's a little bit difficult or different than in Spanish because we have the same amount of vowels, but different amounts of sounds, all right? For example, for us in Spanish, A, E, I, O, U, is gonna, they are gonna sound the same all the time, all right? But in English, we have A, E, I, O, U, but the sounds are different, all right? Sometimes the A is A, uh, sometimes it's A, all right? Or the U is like U, and sometimes it's like O, uh, all right? So it's very different, like we have, 13 sounds, 11 sounds for the vowels. So that makes it a little bit like challenging for us, all right, to understand it. And one of the vowels that are like, the, the changes the sound a little bit and more often is the O, all right? So if you paid attention to the video, we have like three different pronunciations, like O, like O and U, all right? So we have, it's the same vowel, but different sounds. So right now, I'm gonna um, share the video with you so we can listen together and then we, we can make some practices, okay? All right, let's see. I'm gonna share this with you. All right, so here, I have the video here and I'm just gonna share the sound, all right? So remember that this is just for the pronunciation here, okay? So here we go. Hi, let's work on your pronunciation now. Notice how the letter O is pronounced in the following words. Pronunciation. The letter O. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how the letter O is pronounced in the following words. Not. Top. No. Don't. Do. Food. 
One. Love. Remember to play the audio program as food. All right, I want to stop right here. So if you notice, guys, we have four different pronunciations for one vowel. All right, you cannot go in life saying no, like O for everything. All right, so you need to change the pronunciation depending on the word. All right, so in this case, we have four different pronunciations. We have like the O. All right, like the normal O, let's say we have the O U. These guys right here, they're phonetic symbols. Okay, if you have a dictionary, like a paper dictionary, sometimes where you, where you have the word right next to it, you have the phonetic symbols that help that, that helps you pronounce better. All right. At university, for example, where I teach, I teach one semester of phonetics. Phonetics is very, very important, and it's not something that you will learn in one day, all right? It takes a semester, six months, for my, my students at university to understand how phonetics work, all right? So this is like very, very um, challenging and very delicate topic because this is how we pronounce. This is going to help us pronounce a little bit better, all right, or not pronounced so well, all right? So we need to pay attention to that. We cannot, just like yesterday, remember I sent the pronunciation for the ED sounds? You cannot go around saying help it, want it, dance it, work it, play it. You can't do that, right? Because that's like not the right pronunciation. So we need the right pronunciation. And in this case, with the letter O, we have four different pronunciations, all right? So this one's right here on the first column, we have not, Talk and listen, it's not not all right. Like in Spanish, it's like oh, cerrada, like very close. In, in English, it's like not all right. Talk, then we have no, don't, it's like an OU. Then we have a, a U kind of sound, do, food, all right, school, another one, and then we have the uh sound. This is called a schwa, all right. So it's like one, love is not love, it's love. All right, so you have to be very careful with the pronunciation of it, all right? If you say, I love you, like we say in Spanish, I mean, we, we say it, I will understand it, all right? But it's, I love you, right? There is an O, A sound, okay? Let's see, uh, Blanca, can you try to pronounce these four different sounds? Please, for me, uh, Blanquita. No, no, do. One. One. All right, very good. Exa, can you try to pronounce those four, please? Up, down, food, love. Love, very good. Nice. Thank you. Carla, can you try to um, pronounce those four pronunciations? The back, me. The back. Carlita, can you try to pronounce those four? Is Carla around? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Teacher, uh, the first one or the second one? All of them, please. All of them, okay. Yes, thank you. Not, no, Not, uh -huh. two, one. One, very good, yes. Talk, very, uh -huh. don't, full, and love. All right, just check on the pronunciation, Carlita, of this one, don't. It's not don't, don't it's don't. It's like an O-U, right? Kind of sound. Okay. Yes, very good. Thank you, Carla. Nice. Yes, thank you. Very nice. Uh, Giovanni, can you try to pronounce those four, Giovanni? Okay. Not, no, do, right. one. Right, one. Very nice. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, Vero, hi, Veronica. Can you try to pronounce those, please? Yes, teacher. Talk, dumb, put, love. Love, very good, love. Yes, very nice. That one is very tricky. Very good. Gabby, hi, Gabby. Can you pronounce those four, Gabby, please? Okay. Uh, not, no, do, one. Very good, one. Right, very good, very nice. All right, let's see. Um, Maria Araceli, can you pronounce those two? Okay, um, top, dumped, full, love. Right, very good. I like the pronunciation of love. Very good, nice, thank you. All right, let's see here. We have, what else do we have here? 
Let me see, Karen, can you try to pronounce that, please? Karen Reyes. Okay. Not, uh -huh. now, do, one. Very good, one, very good. Brenda, hi, Brenda. Hi, teacher. Hi, nice that you can join us today, very good. Thank you. All right, Brendita, can you try to pronounce those four, please? The four different sounds. Stop, don't, don't, fool. yes, love, love, very good, love, very nice, very good. All right, so I know who, um, someone that has not pronounced for me yet, or everybody pronounced them. Am I missing someone? No, I think everybody pronounced. Okay, very good. So, as I said, guys, pronunciation is super, super important. Okay, so it's very uh necessary for you to practice your pronunciation because that will help you um be like better bilingual all right because you can be bilingual but sometimes the pronunciation is not so like good all right and it takes a while all right so here this is very important for you to do remember all right when you see the o kind of thing what is the right pronunciation for it it's not that there is an, a specific rule, but something I can advise to you is like listening to music, uh, listening to native speakers, listening to movies, and pay attention to how they pronounce. That will help you pronounce better, all right? So just remember that the O, the letter O, or the vowel O is not always pronounced O, all right? So we have four different pronunciations like not, top, no, don't, all right, do, food, put, school, another one, one, love, all right? So we need to practice uh, to get better, all right? I don't know if you have any questions about this pronunciation, guys. Do you have any questions about this? Or you are okay with it? No. You're fine? It's okay. All right, very good. Okay, and the same thing is going to happen with the A, all right? There are different sounds for the A. There are different sounds for the E also, all right? Sometimes it's like E, I don't know, and then you have the uh, U sound. So remember that in English we have more sounds than vowels. That's what makes it difficult sometimes or challenging to get the right pronunciation, all right? Okay, very good, guys. Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to go on uh with the following uh topic which is passive with without by yesterday and before yesterday we have been talking about passive voice okay and we'll continue talking about passive voice but today we're going to talk about passive voice simple present okay yesterday and the day before we were talking about passive voice simple what we were talking passive voice in simple what guys Simple past. Simple past. Simple past. Thank you. And today we're going to talk about passive voice, simple present, which is the same, but the tense changes. All right. And there are some things that we need to remember or that we need to know. I'm just going to take you here again to the video. I know you can watch this at home and you probably did, but I want to stop the video for a little bit. And then I'm going to give you my PowerPoint presentation. And at the end of the class, just like yesterday, I can share the presentation with you, okay? All right, guys, is that okay? Okay. Thank yes. you, all right, perfect. Super. Excellent, so let's listen to it. Active. They manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. Passive. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. Well, hold on, hold on. As we saw with the wait, simple wait, wait. pass sorry, 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 sorry. in most of the EU. I want to go here. <laughs> For the simple present, use the present of B plus past participle. Active. They use the euro in most of the European Union. Passive. The euro is used in most of the EU. Active. They speak English in many European countries. Passive. English is spoken in many European countries. Active. They manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. Passive. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. All right. Okay. So here, I'm going to go back here to the examples. All right. So I just want you to see it. Number one, 
the first thing that we need to do is identify the tense, all right? And right now we know we're talking about simple present, active and passive, all right? So here, for the simple present, we're going to use the present of be. Yesterday and before, we were using the past of be. We were talking about was and were. Now we're talking about is and are, all right? And we can use the other one here. So here we have active. Carla, can you read the active voice a sentence? And Maria, can you read the passive voice sentence? All of them or? Just the first just, one, Carla, just please. The first, just the first okay. active, and then Maria's gonna read the first passive. Okay. They use the euro in most of the European, European? Union. European, European yes. Union. Union. Very good, Carla. Thank you. All right, Maria, can you read the passive voice sentence? <clears throat> the euro is used in most of the USA. Of the European Union. Of the European Union. Thank oh, you. you. Yes, very good. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Gabi, can you read the, the second uh, active? And Karen, can you read the second passive? Okay. <clears throat> they speak English in many European countries. European, European, European countries. European, Excellent. European yes. countries. Thank you. Got it. English is spoken in many European countries. Excellent. Very good. Nice. Brenda, can you read the third active? And Exa, can you read the third passive? They manufacture. Manufacture. They manufacture. A lot of cars in Europe. In Europe, in Europe, yes, in Europe. In Europe. Uh huh. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you guys for like helping me read here. All right, so here, on the first sentence, it says they use the euro. All right, in most of the European Union, the pronunciation, guys, is European. All right, the euro is used in most of the EU or European Union. Now, you please watch the pronunciation for used. All right, the pronunciation is a D sound, used. Remember the chart I sent yesterday? You, we need to like understand how that chart works, okay? The second sentence, they speak English in many European countries. English is spoken in many European countries. And the third example is they manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe, all right? So as we were saying yesterday and the day before, the action on the passive sentences lies on the object, all right? The object is more important, not the doer. And right now, we're not really talking about who did it, all right? We're not really talking about who is, um, I mean, or by whom is being done, all right? So I need you to understand that. Let's see, Franklin. Good morning, Franklin. Franklin, are you there? Good morning. How are you? Fine. Excellent. Franklin, what is the difference between this sentence, the active sentence, number one, and the passive sentence? What do you see? What's the difference there going on? Um, in the verb in past. Uh-huh. The verb in past. On the passive or on the active? Uh, active uh, uh, the bear is is in present. Right. In, yes. In, in passive, uh, the bear is in a uh, uh, pass. Uh, this uh, for right. me. Uh -huh. Bear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're gonna see this right now. Okay. Just look at this one and say, okay, here, I, I, I think I know what we, the teacher is talking about. The verb about. to be. Yes. Thank you. What about it? The ver what about the verb to be? Is um, the verb to be is a present and yes. passive? And yes. Uh huh. And, and the topic the, that we studied yesterday, the past, the verb to be is in in past tense. Right. Okay, Carlita. Yes, you're getting it. Very good. Okay. Very good. I'm gonna stop sharing this right now because my idea is not to see the whole video with you here. Um, I'm gonna show you this. All right, so we can like remember. This is like no new anymore for you guys, but this is what we have here. All right, passive voice, simple present, okay? So here we have, 
passive voice, simple present. Use of passive voice. Let's see. Someone to read it for me. Sophia, can you read it? Good morning, Sophia. Do you mind reading this slide for me, please? Good morning. Okay. Good morning. We Thank you. Of passive voice. We use passive voice when the object of the action is more important than those, those who perform the action. Thank you, Sophie. Very good. All right. We use passive voice when the object of the action is more important than those who perform the action. We have been talking about this yesterday and the day before. The object is more important than who does the action who performs the action, all right? Thank you, Sofia. All right, here, Juan Carlos. Hi, Juan Carlos, good morning. Hi, good morning. Nice to have you in class, Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos, can you help me read from active to passive three steps, please? Okay. Active sentence, mm -hmm. he paints the pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's step one. The, the object of the active sentence becomes the subject of the passive sentence. Thank you. All right. The object of the active sentence becomes the subject of the passive sentence. Giovanni, in the, in the sentence he paints the picture, what is the object? Uh, paint. Paint. Mm, are you sure, Giovanni? No. The picture. I'm the sorry. picture. We're not the okay, Giovanni. The picture. Yes, the picture is the object. Okay. So remember here, guys, it's very important for us to know the parts of a speech or the parts of the sentences. Here we have the subject. This is the verb or the action, and this is the object. Okay. Now the picture, as Giovanni said, becomes the new subject. All right. For the passive sentence. All right. So the picture. All right, so we have that. That's step number one. The object of the active sentence becomes the subject of the passive sentence. So that of means, course. guys, <laughs> yes, very, yeah, very good. So the picture is at the beginning of it. So this is the step number one. When you see a sentence and someone tells you, okay, uh, switch it to passive, the first thing that comes to your mind is, okay, what's, what is the object? All right, if you identify the object, then you, you're safe, okay? You say, oh, the picture. So the picture goes at the beginning. All right, that's a step number one, identifying the object and making it the new subject, okay? Then we have, let's continue here. The picture, as Giovanni said, very good, Giovanni, you saw my slide. <laughs> Next, and step number two, Verito, Veronica, can you read this one, please? We put verb to be into the terms of the active sentence. Yes, we thank you. We put the verb to be into the tense of the active sentence. I'm going to go back here. What is the tense on this sentence, guys? He paints the picture. Which tense are we using here? Anybody to help me? Wow. Guys, come on. Uh huh. Was he all right? Thank you. All right, here is he, uh huh. Is all right, okay. But what is the tense? Is a future simple present, simple past, past participle? What is it? Simple present, excellent. It's simple present. So, the step number two is that you have to identify the tense of the, of the active sentence so you can use. The, ver the proper verb to be, all right? So here we have, we put the verb to be into the tense of the active sentence. Ah, okay, this sentence right here is in simple present. So if I'm talking about simple present, I'm going to use the right, uh, the right verb, of the verb of the verb to be. Active, he paints the picture. Ah, present simple, all right, okay. So that to be in present simple, we have three, um, are, and is, all right? Are you following me here? Do you understand what I'm talking about, guys? Estamos entendiendo? Yes, we're understanding? Yes. yes, thank you, Exa, very good. If someone, yes. If, yes. thank you. If someone else can turn on the cameras, would be nice because I can only see Exa, and I don't know if you guys are understanding or not, but that's okay. All right, if you can. All right, very good. So to be in present simple. So first, 
you identify the object, then you identify the tense of the active sentence, so you know which verb B you're going to be using. All right, thank you here. Okay, so the picture is, ah, uh, okay, because it's simple present, I choose is. What is a step number three? All right, so I want to read a step number three for me. A step three. We put the verb of the active sentences into the past participle. Very good, thank you. All right, this is very important, guys, because you're not gonna use simple past. You're going to use past participle, all right, which is different, all right? Remember that the past participles of the regular verbs are the same, but it, as the simple past, but it's not the same verb, all right? So here we have paint. What is the past participle of paint? Paint. Painted, 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 all right, very good. As the same as the simple past, but it's not simple past, it's past participle here. Ah, okay, so now I have my whole sentence. The picture is painted, all right? Okay, additional step, this is important here. All right, someone to read this for me. <coughs> someone to read this for me, additional step, who can read it? Additional step, if the agent, the performer of the action is important, you use by, Tom paints the picture. The picture is painted by Tom. Very good, all right. If the agent mm -hmm. is somebody, they, he, she, we do not use by. All right, very good, thank you. All right, so here, this is very important. If the agent, the performer of the action, the doer of the action is important and you know it, you can use by. All right, if you have this beautiful picture and you wanna say that Maria painted it, all right, so you say, oh, this picture was painted or is painted by Maria, all right, because it's important and you know the doer of the action, all right? Now, if the agent is somebody, they, he, she, we do not use by, all right? So if you, for example, you say, the picture is been painted by somebody the picture is painted you don't use by anybody all right so you will meet the whole thing the picture is painted that's it because you don't know who painted it maybe or somebody or maybe i don't know who somebody so you don't have to say by because you don't really know all right so here if you have double objects all right i'm going to explain to you what this is mary gives tom a book all right mary is uh here we're gonna well, i'm gonna show you this one the whole thing okay so here we have mary gives tom a book a book is given to tom by mary all right so this is a little bit more complicated all right and it's a little bit longer this happens when we have verbs like give send bring buy tell offer show pay teach and some others all right so when you do that all right, you can say a book is given to Tom or Tom is given a book by Mary. If you want to say by whom, you can say by her. All right, no by she, no by he is by her. So you need the object pronouns, okay? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. All right, very good. If, do you have any questions? Remember that you can ask me any questions and it's fine. We're gonna. I'm gonna try to help you here. No questions so far? No? All right, very good, I'll, I'll move on, okay? If you have questions, please let me know. Now, we have many tenses. Right now we're studying the present simple. She eats pizza, the pizza is eaten by her, by Maria, by, by Franklin, by me, by my baby, by my husband, by whomever, all right? All right. Then we also have, I'm just gonna show you this just for you to know. We also have present continuous, all right? She's eating pizza, the pizza is being eaten by someone. We have present perfect. We have past simple that we have studied. So passive voice, I just wanted to show you this 
because passive voice can be almost in every single tense, almost, all right? So the two, the two tenses that we're studying is past simple and past and simple present, okay? And then past continuous, and then we have past perfect, okay? So that's for you to know as a reference. But right now, I want you to pay attention to the um, simple present passive voice, all right? So here we also have future and we have the going to for future. And you can do all those in passive tenses or passive voice. All right, so here, important. Pay attention to the number. And this is what we were talking about yesterday. They are eating an apple. All right, let's see. Um, someone to tell me what is the object of uh, they are eating an apple. Or they eat an apple, let's put it that way. They eat an apple, um, what is the object? Anybody to help me? What is the object of they eat an apple? Hello? 